Wade here, yet another YouTube Outdoor and Gear Review channel. Today I want to show you a battle of the clones. Uh, which one of those two knives is the clone? Which one is the original? Now, let me tell you straight away. The black one is the evil one. This is the bad one, it's the clone. Now, how bad is it? Well, how bad is it to actually possess or buy a clone? Well, personally, I felt free to buy this clone because I already have the original. I support the original, the manufacturer that is Cold Steel. I buy Cold Steel knives, so I felt free to also buy this illegitimate, illegal copy, actually. It's pretty much illegal, I guess. Uh, although, I must say, this clone uh, says survivalblock.com, so it's clearly distinguishable from the original. I don't think that Cold Steel actually comes with this kind of website on the blade. Uh, I don't think anyone would buy that. If it said my personal name, that would be cool, but just some generic website, I don't know if I like that. Now anyways, um, the problem with this clone in particular is that it also comes with a packaging that at least to my eyes looks very much like it could be a original manufacturer packaging. So obviously this clone is meant for resale. So that means people buy those clones and then resell them as original, which is a terrible practice. Which also shows you should only uh, buy knives from reputable sellers or from good friends where you actually know they won't sell you a fake copy. Because they tell you one thing, on photos alone, you can hardly tell the difference between the clone and the original. It only becomes apparent when you study those two knives in depth. Now, let me point out the differences that the clone has. First of all, same measurements, almost the same weight. The clone is a little bit heavier. If you open up the clone, uh, you realize the additional weight is in a handle because this one has aluminum liners, this one has steel liners. You might say steel is even better than aluminum. I would say no, it adds more weight and the increase that you have in terms of strength is, is not relevant as much, at least not on this type of knife. Now, if you inspect the knife on the outside and you realize everything that is totally flush and perfect on the original is kind of not flush on the, on the clone. It's for example here where the locking mechanism is. Everything is flush, nice and smooth on the original, whereas the fit on the clone is just not there. There are ridges, uh, there are overlaps, there are little gaps on the, on the clone. Also it becomes very apparent on the back and the pommel. The original is nice and smooth. The clone, again, not flush. Uh, there are overlaps. Now the biggest difference is when you uh, disassemble both of them, I did that, you realize you can disassemble and reassemble the original within a few minutes. And it's an easy job with the right tools. You can open it up, you can clean it, reassemble it within five minutes. And you could almost do that probably in the field if you happen to have the right tools. And it's not a big challenge. With the clone, if you open it up and reassemble it, it will take you much more time and a lot more tools. I even needed a hammer. Why is that the case? Because when you open the clone up, uh, you find that the precision in the machining is just not there. This bolt in particular doesn't fit exactly. Um, and um, where the spring is, uh, the, the part that takes in the spring and holds in the spring, there is a, a pin in the original that supports it. Or actually there's a bolt in the original that supports the spring and there's only a pin in the clone that supports the, the whole spring assembly. And that makes, uh, makes it a lot more difficult to reassemble it, to get the pin back in and also a lot more unstable. I actually had to do a few modifications to the clone to make it work properly. Now the action works just pretty much just like the original, but it didn't do it before. 
So there is internal differences between the clone and the original. There's external differences, but on photos or even by just playing around with it quickly, it's hard to tell the difference. I'm tell you that much. Now using both of the knives, I have sent the Coastal Voyager Extra Large through a lot of abuse, use and abuse. In the past, it held up fine. There's no problem on blade. Blade is in a beautiful, serviceable condition. Uh, sometimes you need to fasten that screw a little bit if you like to do uh, batoning and something like that. So it can come a little bit loose, but it's no wonder a big knife like that, hard use. Now with the Voyager Extra Large Clone, things look a little bit different. First of all, the experience of, of working with it is very similar to the original Voyager. But then afterwards, afterwards doing actually rather light work, as you can see in the video, this is nothing out of the extraordinary, not even batoning or so. Well, after inspecting it, I saw that the blade was a little bit chipped. And I don't know if you can see it in the video, right in the area, actually not chipped, but the edge is bent over. I can clearly feel it. So that was after just doing light work. I didn't hit a stone or anything like that. So clearly the steel quality is, there's a big difference. Now cold steel, uh, it's the CTS BD1 steel. And I have no reason to doubt that. It's quality, mid-range quality steel. And here on the co copy, you have a CTS XHP steel. Of course, if you want to believe that, because surely it is something cheap, like a 420 steel. I don't even think it's a 440C steel. It's something cheaper because a 440C steel would have held up way better. So this is clearly a way inferior steel and it's nothing like it says here on the, on the blade. So you get, um, with the copy or with the clone of the cold steel, extra large Voyager, you get definitely an inferior knife. Besides the question of whether you should even buy a clone or so, you definitely shouldn't resell it. Now, um, why would you like a clone? Uh, first of all, yeah, you could use it as a beater knife. You want to, uh, a lot of people do that. They buy the original, it's really beautiful, but then they shy away because it's kind of expensive from using it hard, or they don't want to lose it. For example, when you board a cruise ship or a plane, and then you have the original in your pocket. I mean, you shouldn't not walk around public places with a knife like that. But again, it happened to me. So if you lose the original, very bad. If you just lose a clone, okay, you can live with that. Or if you break the clone with hard use, you can live with that. Or you can also take some spare parts from the clone. You could take a belt clip. Uh, you could take maybe some of the bolts. You can you could use the scales and put it on the original. So you could use it basically as a parts donor for the original. So there are definitely uses pretty much legitimate uses for having a clone um, but other than that I really see no point in buying a clone it's clearly an inferior knife and we definitely want to support the designers and engineers that work for example it's cold steel now a subscriber of mine he said uh, we were discussing a clone of the Benchmade bug out and he said uh, jokingly, well, it could be that the clone sometimes is better than the original. And I have to admit the, the quality of some of those clones that I've seen is outstanding. So this is clearly an inferior clone, but sometimes you wonder uh, whether the clone could be almost a better knife. Besides, of course, the clones, I think, never have the expensive steel types. So this is... Uh, something to, to think about definitely. And if you like, please uh, comment in the comment section. And if you have a better reasoning than I have, or if you have some good sound arguments, please post them below.